All the panelists, if they would come down to the front here, that would be great. I'm going to pass around a sheet um, and just put, this is just for uh, the law school purposes to see who comes to the events and um, and for like to see if people actually came to the event. So if it asks for some sort of NIU affiliation, if you don't have any, you can put none. Uh, it's just to make sure that, that we have people coming to these events and, and to see exactly who is. Um, so what? It for what? It asks for your name and then how you're affiliated with NIU, so feel free to put none. Um, but I know there's a lot of different people here, some students, some um, uh, staff and adjuncts and stuff like that. So this is going to go around. Uh, there is... Oh, you got it? Okay. We can do that. Too. Pass that around. Yeah. Do you want to you open up? And feel free to eat. Thanks for coming. Feel free to eat. There's, there's food in the back for anyone that would like it. Okay, good evening. I am Suzanne Willis. Um, I know a number of you for a variety of reasons. Uh, at the moment, I am wearing my current hat, which is chair of the Department of Counseling, Adult, and Higher Education, which is helping co-sponsor this event. Um, a few of you may still be raising your eyebrows at that. I retired last June after 24 years in the physics department, uh, and so this is a new hat for me. Uh, in any case, the uh, Counseling Adult and Higher Ed is delighted to co-sponsor this. I tried to get some of my faculty to join the panel, but uh, most of our students are working adults, and so most of my faculty are teaching now, uh, so we don't have anyone actually on the panel. But I would like to introduce uh, now Dan Kenny, who I'm sure is also known to many of you, who will give some, uh, some opening remarks. Good evening. Um, my name is Dan Kinney. I'm the uh, co-coordinator with the DeKalb Interfaith Network, one of the co-sponsors of tonight's event. On behalf of the Interfaith Network and the other co sponsors tonight, I'd like to welcome you to this program. And I think we'll have a very interesting discussion as we go forward this evening. One of the things I was thinking about in relation to the program tonight was that the DeKalb Interfaith Network for Peace and Justice was founded nearly 30 years ago. And we are still active today bringing programs such as this to the community. And we also hold a weekly peace vigil on the corner of North First and Lincoln Highway every Friday night at 5 p.m. There's also a sheet that's being passed around for you to sign up if you'd like to be on our email list to receive information about future programs that we may be having. We usually have at least one program every semester. When our organization was founded in the 1980s by Seal Meyer, and Seal, I'm going to ask you to stand. All right, Seal has been our uh, coordinator for many, many years, and she's done a great job of standing up for peace on a regular basis. Burning question. And somebody has a burning question. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, so when we were formed in the 1980s, um, it was at the time of the Nicaragua Civil War, and uh, the United States was covertly funding the Contras and providing arms for the Contras, and uh, they were doing that uh, by selling arms to Iran to fund the Contras in Nicaragua. Which is interesting because just last week we had an incident involving one of our drones over international waters supposedly near Iran which was intercepted by an Iranian jet and was fired upon not with, what, not with the ammunition but fired upon supposedly with a flare uh, the Iranian plane was. And so it just kind of shows a common thread that runs between that time period and today. For today we are discussing the use of drones by the U.S. to control the governments and people of the Middle East. And just as, uh, just like I was saying last week, we had that incident. So it would benefit all of us to keep in mind that drones are really just the latest weapon used by the U.S. to police the world and its own people on American soil, as we've heard that the drones are now being used in Los Angeles, California, and other cities around the country. So I look forward to our discussion tonight and to the broader moral and ethical issues which surround this new frontier of techno technological warfare that we have embarked upon. 
And once again, I thank you for being here tonight. And I'd like to introduce now um, Kevin Zichterman, Vice President of Amnesty International, NIU College of Law, who will introduce our panelists. Hello, everyone. Again, as he just said, uh, as Dan just said, um, my name is Kevin Zichterman. I'm VP of the uh, NIU, the law group, amnesty group here at, uh, at NIU. Uh, because I did not print out the long list of biographies, I'm going to have to read them off my computer, but it's a long list because we have six panelists here tonight. Uh, I'm not sure necessarily of what the order that we really want to go, but I'm just going to do the default of the flyer that we had, um, if that's okay with the panelists. Otherwise, we can go whichever whichever way that they would like to go. It doesn't really matter. What we're going to do is have about, uh, say, an hour or so each presenter will get about 10 minutes if they want to take that time, and then we will do questions uh, after that in the remaining time, hopefully get about a half hour of questions or so. Uh, the one thing I do want, there's two events going on um, in addition to this, Environmental Law Society, you'll see that come up in the future, but the one thing I want to bring up, we have another panel um, that has to do with drones with more, with more uh, legal implications and more domestic use of drones in our symposium. Uh, happening next month. So if you guys want to catch that, it's going to be the first panel of that symposium. Uh, come to me and I'll give you an email address to do that. Uh, so feel free to do that. I actually have stuff here for the symposium for Amnesty and there's stuff on drones there, I think, from uh, from the various organizations here up in the front if you want to grab that. Starting now with our panelists, um, just because I put them in this order, we have Professor Morris Tan here. Um, wait here. There you go. And he is a uh, professor here at the law school. He teaches primary, primarily international uh, law, human rights, international criminal law, and bioethics. Um, he is a Supreme Court uh, finalist, and he was uh, a visiting scholar and senior research fellow at the University of uh, Texas School of Law, and he has published in many different journals um, in these fields that I had just mentioned. Um, and one, is the leading, one of the leading scholars on actually North Korea and the Western Hemisphere. He has served as a peer reviewer and, and, uh, for the Human Rights Journal and the International uh, Negotiation Journal. He's worked in many major law firms, the American Medical Association Institute of Ethics, and as a certified mediator, and for organizations such as the UN Development Program, um, as the American Association <laughs> of Neurological Surgeons. Um, these are very long, so I'm going to try to skip a little bit ahead on some of these. He uh, graduated with honors from Wheaton College and got a ma his master's also from their graduate school. And he graduated from Northwestern University College of Law, uh, School of Law. And he recently signed a book track contract with uh, Rutledge on uh, North Korea. So um, he's very excited about that. Uh, he is, will be our first panelist. Our second will be the gentleman sitting next to him, uh, Dawood Ahmed, who is right there. He is actually uh, an attorney from the UK, um, so he has a little different background. And he, so he's an attorney and a doctoral researcher in international comparative law at the University of Chicago. Uh, he's at the University of Chicago, received his law degree from uh, Oxford University, um, practiced in London, and has worked on international law issues at organizations including the UN, and Comparative Constitutions Project, and his writings on international law have appeared in The Guardian, Foreign Policy, and Global Post. Next, we have Dr. Howard uh, Solomon. I'm kind of blocking him. Uh, Dr. Solomon teaches ethics classes with the City Colleges of Chicago, um, because doing so because doing so helps him lead others to a more deliberative approach to resolving ethical problems. He also hasn't missed involved, being involved in some way in, with the election since uh, Nixon was elected uh, as president in 1968, showing his, his age a little bit. <laughs> um, he, he bought into that mistake because he read bumper stickers. Uh, soon thereafter, he became a philosopher and, and sought to know more about bumper stickers and what they would tell him. Um, <laughs> He is taught at the College of Law of Lake County, Kennedy King College, Malcolm X, the City Colleges of Chicago Center for Distance Learning, and Colorado Technical University. And he has designed and written courses for Colorado Technical University. 
Center for Distance Learning, Florida State University, and Northern Arizona University. He's, he gets around, apparently. Um, yeah, he is part of the steering committee of the DeKalb Interfaith Network. 